In this video, I will demonstrate how to find the resultant vector of three or more vectors. So I have this highly complicated uh, set of vectors here labeled A, B, C, and D. And what we want to do is find out systematically, mathematically, how to add them all up and find the resultant vector. Let's get started. What you need to do is you need to find the x and y components of each individual vector. We'll start off with the x and y components of A. And I'm going to call, I'm going to create a small table here. And here I'll label the x components and the y components. And we'll start off with A. And of course, we'll do B as well, C, and D. We're going to start with A. And remember, any trigonometric function used here, as per the cast rule, will be positive. So what we'll do is create this pseudo triangle. And if we are looking for this, which is the y component of A, we will have to use the opposite and hypotenuse relationship. So, uh, so it would be sine. Sine of 58. Opposite is what we're looking for. And the hypotenuse is what we have. And if we are doing the x components, we will use cosine, because cosine relates the adjacent, which is what we're looking for, and the hypotenuse. Cosine of 58 is equal to the adjacent over 42. We'll find the answer to that shortly. Let's program, or let's figure out the formulas for B, C, and D as well. We're going to create the pseudo triangle here, and we're going to start off with the x component. We will be using cosine, but we can't use 148. We have to use the reference angle. The reference angle is simple to find. What we do is we take, so for B, we're going to do a little bit of math here. We're going to take 180 minus 148 which will give us an answer of 32. We have to use 32. And because the cast rule says that only sine will be positive here, our answer, whatever our answer is, has to be negative. We have to revert it to negative numbers because our calculator is only programmed to give us positive ratios. With that said, the adjacent is what we're looking for. And the hypotenuse is 56.1. We haven't found the answer yet, but we, we will shortly. And similarly, the sine will be 32 degrees over our opposite, which is what we're seeking, over 56.1. Now, we don't have to worry about that problem here because sine is always positive in this quadrant. Let's carry on. So for C... This time we have an angle of 232. We once again need to find the reference angle. So we'll do that above. It's going to be 232 minus 180. And this time we'll use our calculator just to be exact. 232 minus 180 is equal to 52, 52 degrees. And this time, both cosine and sine will give us or should be reverted to negative. So cosine of 52. And this time we are looking for our adjacent. So this right here, ADJ, over 52.7. And our answer will be negative. And similarly, sine of 52 opposite over 52.7 and our answer will also be negative negative. and lastly we'll concentrate on D and in this case cosine is safe it's going to be positive cosine of our reference angle this one represents 291 so we'll have to subtract 360 from 291 
which should give us 69 as our reference angle, 69. 69 is equal to an adjacent of, which is what we're looking for, ADJ, and our magnitude is 45.3. The answer will be positive, so we don't have to worry about that. And sine will be 69 opposite over 45.3. And unfortunately, we have to revert it to negative. So let's calculate these using our calculator. We'll start off with the x components. So we're going to cross multiply to figure out what ADJ is. Simply we multiply across like this. So 42 times cosine of 58 is equal to 22.25. 56.1 times cosine 32 will give us negative 47.57. Nextly, 52.7 times cosine of 52 will give us an answer of 32 or negative 32. Point forty-four. I'm going to highlight these as well later on. And lastly, 45.3 times cosine of 69 is equal to 16.23. So I'm just going to highlight these so that they're visually more apparent to you. And we're going to do the same thing for the y components. 42 times sine 58 is equal to 35.61. 56.1 times sine of 32 gives us, I think I made a mistake there. I'm going to quickly change it for you. 29.72 and 52.7 times sine of 52 is equal to 41.52 or negative 41.52 and finally this number will also be negative 45.3 times sine of 69 gives us an answer of negative 42.29. Once again, I will, I will highlight these numbers so that we can see them properly. And now what we'll do is we will add them. And we should get the x and y components of our resultant vector. 22 excuse me, 22.25 minus 47.57 minus 32.44 plus 16.23. And that gives us an answer of negative 41.25. 5, negative 41.53. And don't be alarmed if it, the, the answer you get is negative. That's totally normal. 35.61 plus 29.72 minus 41.52 minus 42.29. And the answer we get is negative 18.48. Negative 18.48. So, if I were to plot this, it would look, it would be somewhere here. So this is my x-coordinate, this is my y-coordinate, and the tip of this vector, of this resultant vector, will be somewhere here.
Excellent. So now what we need to do is we need to find the magnitude, how long this is, and we need to find the angle. So we will start off by finding the magnitude. And the way we find the magnitude is we use the Pythagorean theorem. We have our A, we have our B, we're looking for our C. Let's do that. Negative 41.53, and by the way, the Pythagorean theorem looks like this. Negative 18.48. And we're going to find out what the answer to this is, and then we're going to square root it. So let's do that on our calculator. Negative 41.53 to the power of 2 plus negative 18.48 to the power of 2. And there you have it. We're going to square root this number, and we get 45.45. C is equal to 45.45. That is the magnitude of our resultant vector. Now what we need to do is we need to find the angle. And what we can do is use any trigonometric function we want. We can use cosine, sine, or tangent. I will use tangent only because those are the two numbers that we know are definitively correct. So the opposite and the adjacent, because there's always a chance that you got your C wrong, so you don't want to botch the whole question just because of that. So tangent theta is equal to your opposite, which is our B, over our adjacent, which is negative 41.53. And the answer, negative 18.48, negative 18.48 divided by negative 41.53. And we will use the inverse tangent now, which is on our calculator. And we get 23, 23.9, I believe it was 8, 23.98 degrees. Now, that does not mean your resultant vector has 23.98 degrees. That's the reference from here to here. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to add that to 180 degrees to find our resultant, which will be plus 180, is equal to 203.98. So our final answer, we're going to call this vector v, is equal to 23.98, excuse me, will be 45.45, I like to write the magnitude first, and then the final angle of 203. 0.98 degrees. There you have it, folks. That is how you find the resultant vector of three or more vectors. If you have any more questions related to this, or if you have any math, science, history, nursing, business questions, please use our website at biology-forums.com. See you soon.